Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice Diophantine equation. This problem is from a book called Mathematical Olympiad Treasures by Titu Andrescu. So, we have 4x squared plus 9y squared equals 72z squared, and we're looking for integer solutions to this equation. First of all, notice that 9y squared and 72z squared are both multiples of 3. So we can safely say that x is divisible by 3 because 4x squared is. Alright, so 4 doesn't contain any 3's, therefore x must be divisible by 3 here. We also know that we also know that 4x squared and 72z squared are even, therefore 9y squared needs to be even, which means y is y is even. Because 9y squared is. Alright, having established those two things, we can go ahead and substitute. So we can write x as 3a, where a is an integer, and y as 2b, or not 2b, because y is even. So let's go ahead and plug these into our original equation. When you replace x with 3a, you're going to get 9a squared. Multiply by 4, you're going to get 36a squared. Replace y with 2b, you're going to get 4b squared. That's going to give you 36b squared. And that sum is equal to 72z squared. Awesome. We can go ahead and divide everything by 36, and this gives us a much, much simpler equation. a squared plus b squared equals 2z squared. Nice. Now, notice that a squared plus b squared is even. So, either a and b are both even or both odd. In other words, a and b have the same parity. So I can also write it as a and b are both even or both odd. That's what we can get from here. All right, so that also has some important conclusions. Since A and B are both even or both odd, their sum, their sum is always going to be even, which means A plus B over 2 and A minus B over 2 are integers. Again, if A and B are both odd, their sum is even. If they're both even, their sum is even. The same thing for the differences. Great, so now let's go ahead and Take this equation and multiply both sides of that equation by 2. I'll show you why in a little bit. You could also go with the fractions, but I just like this a little better. So if you multiply that equation by 2, you get 2a squared plus 2b squared equals 4z squared. Now here, we can go ahead and divide both sides by 4, right, to get the z squared by itself. Let's see what happens in that case. If you go ahead and, you know, just divide both sides by 4. By the way, before we divide by 4, I think we should do the following. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can write this as a difference uh, sum. Well, I can basically write this as a plus b squared plus a minus b squared. Now, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm doing it. So, in, in other words... I'm trying to write the 4z squared as a sum of two squares, and we do know that those sums are going to be uh, even. Now, if you expand both of these expressions on the left-hand side, you're going to notice that the 2ab cancels out, and you end up with 4ab. Okay, so this has some important conclusions. Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit further. I can now, I can now go ahead and write this z squared as, well, after dividing both sides by 4. So I can go ahead and divide by 4 here, and divide by 4 here. But I can also write this as a quotient squared, so I can kind of write it as a plus b over 2 squared, and a minus b over 2 squared, because of the 4s. Now, this is nice, because we do know that a plus b over 2 and a minus b over 2 are both integers. So, we're kind of t we were able to write z squared as a sum of two integer squares, which is really cool. So let's go ahead and do a little bit more substitution here. 
How about calling this a plus b over 2 u and how about calling the other thing w? So here's what we have u equals a plus b over 2 and w equals a minus b over 2. Now later on we're going to get back to this and this obviously has some important uh, conclusions or results. Anyway, so we have this z squared equals u squared plus w squared. And guess what? This is the Pythagorean theorem. Good old Pythagorean theorem. Now, this is an equation. We, we know that there are infinitely many solutions to this, but let's go ahead and try to express them uh, using parameters. And so I'm going to quickly go over the process for that one. So um, I apologize for the lengthy video because I kind of I'm going to um, I'm going to go into this Pythagorean thing a little bit. So first of all, my claim is one of u and w must be even. So I'm just saying that hey, one of these has to be even. One of these must be even. So that's a required. I'm not saying both, but one of them at least. Of course, if w and u are both even, then z is going to be even, like 6, 8, 10 is an example, right? So, how can I prove something like this? Must be even. How about proof by contradiction? Suppose, suppose u and w are both odd. And in this case, we can go ahead and let u equal 2c minus 1 and w equals 2d minus 1. And let's go ahead and add them up because we know z squared is equal to u squared plus w squared. So z squared becomes 2c minus 1 squared plus 2d minus 1 squared. Let's go ahead and expand this. 4c squared minus 4c plus 1. 4d squared minus 4d plus 1. And that is equal to z squared. Now notice that these terms are all divisible by 4. And then I get 1 plus 1 which is 2. So I can basically write the z squared as 4 times something, and let's call that, I don't know, maybe e, plus 2. Which means z squared is 2 mod 4. Let's go ahead and keep that for a while, because we're going to try to arrive at a contradiction. Now, we know that u and w, u and w are odd which means their squares are also odd, right? And now, when since z squared is u squared plus w squared, that means z squared is also going to be, not also, but z squared is going to be even. So we can write z, we can write z as 2f. So from here, z squared becomes 4f squared. Because z is even, I can write it as 2 times an integer. f is an integer here. But when you square it, things are going to be a little different. Now let's go back to this statement where we said z squared is congruent to 2 mod 4, but now I'm saying z squared is equal to 4 times f squared, which is, which is, which is 0 mod 4. So now we have a contradiction. This can't be happening. These two cannot be happening at the same time. Therefore, our initial claim was wrong, which said u and W are both odd, that means one of them, at least one of them, must be even. Great. So now, one of U and W is even. Okay. Now, suppose U is even. Suppose U can be written as 2G, so it's even. And now let's go ahead and substitute this. Our equation was u squared plus w squared equals z squared. And I'm going to replace u with 2g. That's going to give me 4g squared plus w squared equals z squared. Let's go ahead and put the w squared on the other side and write this as 4g, 4G squared equals z squared minus w squared, which can be factored into z plus w and z minus w. Now take a look at this. We have z plus w multiply by z minus w is equal to 4g squared. 4 is a perfect square, g squared is a perfect square, so this is a perfect square. So what can I say about z plus w and z minus w? Here's what I could say. What about both of these numbers b 
being two times a perfect square and that'll be work perfect so i can safely say that if z plus w is 2m squared and z minus w is 2n squared where m and n are integers then the product is going to be 4m squared n squared which can be written as 4g squared so from here we can say the following u equals 2g that was our previous assumption and from here we got 4m squared n squared equals 4g squared which means g equals mn so i'm going to write it here g equals m times n so these two results are super duper important because we can put it together and write the u as 2mn great so we got the value of u in terms of m and n let's go ahead and you know just plug it into the original equation or uh, you know by using what we already have we can um, go ahead and evaluate the other ones how we said that hey z is going to equal to f and then we said u is equal to that so let me go ahead okay so we said that z plus 2 z plus w i'm sorry z plus w is equal to 2m squared from here right and z minus w is 2n squared we established that already let's go ahead and add these up and divide by 2 we get 2z is equal to 2m squared plus 2n squared which means z is equal to m squared plus n squared and w by subtracting these equations and dividing by 2 you get w equals m squared minus n squared so this is really cool we got all the values for u z and w in terms of m and n but here's the thing if you plug it plug these in to the you know equation which was u squared plus w squared equals z squared you're going to notice the following 2mn squared plus m squared minus n squared squared equals m squared plus n squared squared so this is very easy to establish you can just go ahead and expand and prove that this is true but there's one thing that is really important here and that is that is the fact that i can introduce another constant inside such as this instead of 2mn in other words i can multiply both sides by k squared and kind of distribute the k squared and then square root both sides or square root each term in other words i can write uh, each of these as follows you can be written as 2m n multiplied by k and then the second one was w right w is k times m squared minus n squared and z can be written as k times m squared plus n squared awesome so that gave us the values of u w and z z is fine but u and w needs to be written in terms of x and y because remember our equation original equation contained x y and z so let's go ahead and try to do that right now now remember if you take a note hopefully u was equal to a plus b over 2 and w was a minus b over 2 so from here a plus b if you add u and w a plus b is basically a plus b plus a minus b and divide that by 2 you're going to get the following so in other words i'm kind of complicating things here to keep a long story short u plus w is going to be a and u minus w is going to be b because a over 2 plus a over 2 is a and vice versa okay so we got the values of a and b from here let's see how we can turn it into so using these for example u and w i can write the a as a as u plus w which is 2 m and k plus k times m squared minus n squared and i can write the b as you know u minus w which is 2 m and k minus k times the quantity m squared minus n squared but guess what we got we have to do the following here we kind of ran out of the blackboard now it's the whiteboard uh, what i can do now is replace a with what it is or x and y with what it is and remember going back x is equal to 3a that was our initial assumption remember because x was divisible by 3 and y was divisible by 2 or y was just even so we wrote it as 2b or not to be remember that now x becomes from here 3a which is if you go ahead and multiply everything by 3 k 
you're going to get the following 2mn my plus m squared minus n squared y can be written as 2k times 2mn minus m squared plus n squared and z was already written as k times m squared plus n squared and that brings us to the end of this video well, thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye